you right guys, Shay here, and even bounce up you guys as well. So, I seen Rafiq, I had to be on this, you know, um, being a, you know, Asian lad, uh, born and bred up north, uh, playing in the leagues there, um, being subjected to some of the racism that he, that as Rafiq has suffered and mentioned, um, obviously nowhere to near the extent, uh, but this story did um, kind of move me in a variety of ways and kind of, it, it kind of brought back some personal experiences of mine, so I felt like I need to do a video on this. Um, you know, I've always said this channel, you know, uneven bounce. I'm just a fan channel. That's all I am, really. Just someone who loves the game. I loved it for almost 30 years. Um, I'm deeply passionate about cricket, um, English cricket in particular. You know, obviously, I followed for a long time, and you know, I just wanted to, I want to want to cover the team, but also um, I want to cover stories that move me, that interest me, because. I will give a different perspective than to the major news outlets because I haven't got obviously the ties that they have, the the kind of the red tape you have to go through. I'm just a guy speaking to a camera, just chatting to you guys, that's it, you know, and just sort of please I'll engage some kind of opinion, engage, you know, opinion debate, um, through my opinions. But anyway, um so yeah, as Rafiq, if you haven't been kind of following cricket at all for the past two weeks and you've been kind of hiding under a rock, um as seen Rafiq, the former Yorkshire off spinner, came out um to Wisden magazine and basically cited that I mean, it was actually the interview was about him and his launch his new business it's on uh, I think it's like a, a tea cafe uh, type place with like um, homemade um, Pakistani um, region food uh, basically so yeah he just wanted to discuss that um, but it obviously got into his cricketing background and his career and everything and then he came out with it um, with the kind of racial abuse that he'd suffered so yeah you know the major major talking point here uh, which is yeah all over the internet cricketing media um it's like yeah Sim Rafiq is basically accusing Yorkshire County Cricket Club of institutional racism um and he cited a lot of his own personal experiences very 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 negative uh, racial racist experiences that he's had uh, at the club in his two since there he was there from 2000 and eight well he played made his first team debut I believe in 2008 2014 when he's released came out two years later um 2016 and played the 16 17 18 seasons uh predominantly in t20 cricket i think it might have been solely actually in t20 cricket um but yeah he just came out with this and uh he's not mentioning names to be fair um and you know i understand why um but yeah he's come out and basically said that he was obviously uh, racially abused throughout his time he was suicidal um he was deeply upset he i think he mentioned in one article i read that uh, he, he was hoping for a car crash at times and he was driving to the ground it was it's horrendous it's horrendous what he's gone through um it's yeah i mean some people are saying that he's kind of blowing this thing out of proportion which i find kind of ludicrous um you don't go to this extent if you just feel like you just kind of hammer things up a little bit you won't you won't say that you know um that being said with asking Rafiq, I, I firmly believe you know there's um there's no smoke without a fire and i i i, I put a lot of money a fair amount of money to say that what he said 90 percent is absolutely true and we'll find out with legal investigation that's underway now um my personal opinion of Asim Rafiq when he first came onto the scene that he wasn't actually that good of a player um, and if you look at what's happened to him he was actually given a reasonable chance you know uh, <clears throat> under Andrew Gale was obviously coach was a captain and his coach in the second stint um, he got a fair opportunity um, he obviously directed cricket as Martin Moxon who he's been he's been talked in quite a negative light here from Rafiq, you know, um, not really caring about him when um, his personal tragedy um, came upon him, and we'll get into that a little bit later on in this video. But um, he, you know, he was talking about what he's. I mean, yeah, this sort of situation with these guys with Gale and, Ruf and uh, Martin Moxon. But so he's back to my point. I, I feel like I, actually he was given a fair opportunity. I mean, he played. 38 games um and he took was it 71 wickets i believe yeah 71 wickets um in 38 matches and it was an average of almost 40. Now that's obviously that's in first class cricket that's not obviously going to 
so it's obviously no great shake there's not not that impressive at all is it really let's be fair um he obviously had much more success in t20 cricket um which is why it was surprising he got you know dropped he got um his contract wasn't renewed basically in 2018 and i think that's where i take on bridge with the whole situation i think from a playing perspective don't forget he was made captain of the county in 2012 when jason gillespie was the coach um he was given a county cap as well um he had eight years in total or say eight to 16 years was nine years actually playing first team cricket he was given an opportunity stats were okay he obviously did okay in first class, first class cricket cricket with the bat he averaged just over 21 in 104 50s he was a reasonable low rod batsman but he was very much a you know if you want to call him an all-rounder very much a bowling heavy all-rounder a bowler who could you know almost like Werner Verlander you know he wouldn't really call him a fully fledged all-rounder he's a bowler who could bat a little bit you know and on his day score a few runs that's about it um but I actually I always felt with his character he did come across quite arrogant um and quite yeah quite cocky um and very self-assured i think it's a bit of a facade from what i could see but I mean, he, he came across that way um so for me it was like well I, i'm not really gonna entertain you that much but i don't really i wasn't really warming to ask him if he when he played to be completely honest and his stats are okay nothing special and i think we must also remember that yorkshire served him pretty well um until the end I think he was given ample opportunity. Um, in his second stint, as I mentioned before, so he was dropped in 2014. He was released then. He played in um, minor leagues in Sheffield and that area in Yorkshire. Um, to 2016, then he was recalled. I'm not sure it was an exclusive white ball contract, but he played pretty much as T20 cricket during that period. I actually wrote stats down because it's, in those first two seasons, that was three years, he was phenomenal. If I just, uh, just tell you now actually what his stats actually were. So in... In 2016, in his return, which Yorkshire got to finals day, um, he bowled 31 point, th- sorry, 39.1 overs, 11 matches, took 15 wickets at 18, with an economy rate of 7.07, the second highest wicket taker in that season. Season later, um, he, uh, he, sorry, he, um, he played 12 matches, 44 overs, 17 wickets at 21, with an economy rate of 8.36, is better than D. Rashid. Yeah, Shout did him that season. Um, and he was joint highest wicket taker that season as well. I think it was, I'm not exactly, I can't remember who it was with now. Was it David Willey? Uh, I wrote it down. I didn't write it down, I just, I just saw it there. But, um, you yeah, know, he was basically joint highest wicket taker. Um, and he was second highest wicket taker in the first season back. I think Eddie, he actually uh, did best in Rashid as well in that season. And he, well, yeah, he did better than Rashid in the 2016 season. And then in 2018, um, this is where he slipped off now. We'll get to this in a second. But um, he took, he played 12 matches, 37 overs. He took eight wickets at 42 with an economy rate of 9.02. Now, Yorkshire were awful that season. I mean, Tim Breslin, the, you know, massively lauded Tim Breslin, and rightly so. Wonderful player. Wonderful kind of cricketer. Um, I'm not going to make any bones about that for sure, but he took in the same same season he played 11 matches so one less match than Rafiq he took five wickets at 62 with a economy rate of 10.45 far worse Rafiq wasn't the only one to pull that season the majority of players who pulled that season it was only like Stephen Patterson who did well it came out of any real credibility the rest were really really poor so I think it's you know it's important to remember that it wasn't just Rafiq who did the pull that season that being said the massive drop off I think you could. I think it's fair to say it's understandable due to his personal situation. Now, um, I've seen Rafiq um, very sadly had a, uh, him and his wife had a, a stillborn child early that season, and he and yeah, um, he he obviously uh, cites a lot of his, his downturn in form to that, which is completely understandable. If you're a parent, like I am. The idea of losing a child that way is just absolutely, it's, it's, it's sickening, it's heart-wrenching, it's horrible, you know, so, you know, um, to, to go through that, to, to, to have that situation upon you and then to, I mean, he, he turned up for training, you know, a lot sooner than maybe he was, he should have, he was advised apparently, apparently by Yorkshire, 
to take more time off. He didn't. Um, but his first day back in the office, so back at his training, he was apparently called it, apparently called in by Martin Moxon and given dressing down, uh, which is very disappointing to see, obviously. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, it's just extremely sad. And obviously, three months later, after the season finishes, he's dropped. You know, he's released from his contract again. He wasn't, it was, contract wasn't renewed. It was a three year deal. It wasn't renewed. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I I think that's, I, I, I don't, you know, after what he's gone through, he's obviously, he's had a count, you know, he's ca- captain uh, the side, he's, he's had his county cap, he's been there for 10 years, basically, at Yorkshire. Um, he's also the Academy Player of the Year as well, when he was obviously uh, still in the Yorkshire Academy, I think it was 2007, 2008, that was. He had a long running history of Yorkshire, because he's not put him some kind of like, incremental contract just to see him through for that year and maybe give him one more opportunity the next year and show some compassion about what's gone what he's gone through um apparently you know he was um, he said that people didn't really take it that serious of what's happened to him and just he wanted to blame on him he also felt like um he reported an incident where one of the players was uh, racially abusing him um in 2017 to gail who was then the coach um, and Martin Mox and it was kind of his form deaf ears which is hugely disappointing to hear now you know and then for, from, to go from that to to go from that to the situation where you know he's then a year later he's then yeah had obviously a situation with his his unborn child um, gone through probably absolute emotional hell for the best part of nine months and then um, well, that's what he said anyway, and then obviously then being dropped, you know, that's just a real kick in the teeth, isn't it? I mean, that's just to put him mildly. Um, getting on to the racial incidents that he's faced, you know, some of the comments, I think he played a game with Ajmal Shazad, um, Ronan Avidal Hassan, um, Rashid, the Rashid and himself, and one of the players said, there's too many of you here, you know. It, it was apparently taken in banter, but the reality is, I've been there with that. I've been that with Hull. It's banter. It's part of it's banter. I remember I was about 13 or 14 playing back home in one in you know, my club and we were set like a fantasy league and everyone was like, yeah, we should call me Shay. Um, you know, call my team the Curry Munchers. You know, I just laughed it off because I'm basically surrounded by a bunch of men. Men. Because I played at a much higher level. Um, people much older than me, obviously. So, um, you know, they were all, and I just, just laughed it off, but it hurts. Do you know what I mean? It hurts. I mean, you just, just because you've got brown skin, you was masking a curry muncher. Would you call someone of English descent, you're a fish and chip muncher? You know, call you fish and chips. You wouldn't. But there is racial connotations to that. Now, the person who started that off was a really nice guy. I'm sure it was really cool, and he was good off that as well. But it's that's all taken in back. Everyone laughed. And that was taken in banter, including me. I laughed, I laughed, what am I going to do? Do you know what I mean? But it's taken as, as banter. But the reality is, you could argue that's racist quite easily, you know? Um, and this is the thing that people say these kind of things, that, oh, just, just having a laugh, just taking the piss, do you know what I mean? But it's not funny. If you think about it, it's not really funny at all. Um, and so this is the thing, you know, it's so like, I mean, but then it got a lot worse than what, Rafiq was saying, I mean, allegedly, um, one of his teammates said, like, oh, don't talk to him, he stinks. Um, or oh, he's not a shake, he's don't talk to him, he's not an old shake, don't worry about him, you know, just another package, you know what I mean? Um, and I know exactly where he's coming from, you know, with that, that, that word and everything. I've, I've been there so many times, you know what I mean? Um, that he's just thrown about, do you know what I mean? <coughs> um, it's just, it's just not acceptable. It's not acceptable. And this actually leads me on, I mean, <laughs> this leads me on to the next point about the um, the South Yorkshire League chairman. I think his name is um, Roger Pugh and his comments, because that I thought was absolutely disgusting. I thought that was reprehensible, What he how he's come out. I mean, a day later in his newsletter, I believe it was on September the 3rd, he, um, he basically said that he was... Um, Disrespectful and discourteous, I believe it was. That's how we, that's how we coined him. Discourteous, yeah. Disrespectful and discourteous. Um, 
but unbelievably, shockingly, he's said this as part of... Now, this is what has been written, allegedly, in this... Well, not allegedly, this is what's said in the article. Um, <coughs> he might come up with it, and he might say he misquoted, but this is what's been said in this article anyway. So, um, he talks about the fact that he was difficult to deal with uh, for the years that he dealt with him in the, um, in the South Yorkshire Leagues. But anyway, eventually he ends up... The, in the article ends with, I'm not a religious man, but a biblical quote seems apt to me here. S sorry. <coughs> seems apt to me here. It is, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. So let's just focus on that for a second. So we're saying because he's, or he was perceived to be discourteous and disrespectful, he deserves to have a stillborn child to be racially abused by his teammates, not just random people in the street, by his own teammates. Been accused of, well, been saying to him that he stinks, <coughs> amongst other things like, you know, all shaky on talk to him and completely ostracized. And he deserves that because he was discourteous and disrespectful, apparently, according to this quote. I was almost speechless at that, to think that someone could be that horrible and could be that far removed from any form of race relations and just not give the slightest fuck of what happened to this man over the time that he spent at Yorkshire and to say, well, he's a bit of a prick. And to be honest with you, I can understand that because I could see that in the picture as well. And he might have been difficult to deal with off the pitch. Fair enough, fair play. But how can you say that he deserves that? What's happened to him because he was disrespectful and he was difficult to deal with? Just think about that, Mr. Pugh, because you should really think about what you said there and you should retract what you've said. You should apologise because that is utterly disgraceful, what's happened there. Disgraceful. I, I still can't fully believe he said that to be honest with you I, it's part of me feels like that might have been a misquote i just don't see how someone could do that could say something like that just think about it just take away any if you you know if you feel like maybe rafiq is just you know was hamming up and like you said before some of the, some of the, there are critics out there of what he said they're always going to be no matter how you cut it there's always two sides always always two sides to a story so yeah, maybe he's embellished some of the story. Maybe you think that way, and maybe a lot of what he's saying is, is not true. Fair enough. But if it is true, what do you feel about Mr. Pugh's comments? What do you think about that? I mean, do you understand to a certain extent what he said? Why he said it? Can you explain to me? Because I'd love to know. I'd love to know. You know, so... It's just, yeah, it's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible story. You know, I thought my kind of teen story was bad. I thought that was bad. But this is way worse. This one's way worse. This cuts way deeper. And not just for me, because of my background. Forget about that. You know, um, it was just overt racism. You know, it's... <laughs> to have your teammates say stuff like they said about him, you know, like... With the teeny, they just ostracised him, didn't say anything to him, just ignored him. That seems like child's player right now. That sounds like playing the land of Narnia compared to what he's gone through. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm struggling really to kind of encapsulate it on here. What I really want to kind of want to get across. Hopefully you're understanding my point of view here. I'm trying to hold a reasonably balanced view in terms of especially his playing career i feel like he was given ample opportunity and he did perform well when he came back and i don't think he should have been dropped i think he should be given one more season i just feel like his treatment is disgusting and something has to be done and comments like mr pews alleged comments like mr pews are the reason why yorkshire have been accused of institutional racism that's the reason you know, and then you look at that situation there with was it Richard Hutton, who's the chairman, 
who's a listed law firm who is at Squires Squires Boggs. I actually got it down here. Um, I think I think it was yeah Squires Boggs something as I think referred to as Squires. Um, but then it obviously came out of the woodwork that he worked there, at Squires Pattern and Boggs, that he worked there. I mean, he's qualified solicitor, and he worked there when he started his, his law career. And he's enlisted his mates, basically, to um, help with the, the investigation. What's, what's going to happen there? I mean, Rafiq said, there's some really clever people at Yorkshire. Now, you have to hear them out, Yorkshire, but just... I was a bit disappointed to see that. It was obviously... To me, there's certain comments of interest. They haven't come out and denied that or any comments of interest whatsoever that he left like years and years ago that's true do you not think he's retained some friends to that law firm though mr hutton do you not think that richard hutton still knows some people there of all the, the law firms and leads he hires them you know um yeah i'm just really glad that rafiq has also lawyered up i'm really happy about that he's put that on his facebook page that all inquiries must go through his, his law firm. I think it's Chadwick or something, I can't remember. But anyway, I'm really happy about that because he's planned to fight fire with fire and he's come out and said he will prove anything he needs to um, when the investigation unfolds. So that is really good. I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah, I and mean, that's pretty much it for me, guys, on this video. It's obviously quite a deep one. It's not my happy go lucky and England have won a you know, test match or a T20 or whatever. Um, but like I said before, this channel is called Uneven Bounce. I set it up because I want to tackle the issues that other people will not. And that's a fact. You will not see many people at all doing what I've done here today. And I'm not sure what's gonna happen. It doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. I'm doing this for low cricket and nothing else. I just enjoy it. I just want to engage with people out there, people I've not met before and just engage in debates with them and set like almost like a bit of a, a community on YouTube. That's that's all I want. I don't want anything else, do you know? Um, and hopefully you guys, you know, can understand that. But I, I will, I will, and I'll never stop doing it. If I, if I stop doing it, I'll stop the channel. There's no point, it, 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 it's, a, it's pointless to me. If I'm just gonna be run the mill, you know, cookie cutter, straightforward opinions, sit on the fence, I can't do that. If I'm going to do that, then I'm not going to do this. You understand? So that's where I'm coming from. That's why I call this channel Uneven Bounce. Sometimes it'll be low, sometimes it'll go high. Sometimes it'll go right over your head. Sometimes we're heading for for the uh, never regions. It depends on what, what, uh, what, how I feel I need to approach the situation because I won't hold back if I need to. I won't. I won't. So anyway, um, if you're still here at the end of this video, um, thank you very much. Um, I'm expecting potentially some kind of conflicting comments on this one, um, but I'm I'm fine with that. Whatever you want to, you know, chuck my way, please feel free. Comment. Do leave me a comment. Let's talk about it. Let's see what you got. You got. You got alternate opinions to me. No problem. Let's hear it. I'm I'm all ears. You know, I'd, be, I'd love to hear some alternative opinions out there. To be honest, it'd, it'd be good. Uh, spark of some proper debate but anyway that's it for me guys um, i'm gonna leave it there um yeah and yeah um as i always say you know please do i'm not gonna say like this video because you might not so just thumbs up thumbs down whatever you feel is you you know you feel you want to do um you know if you do like the content then obviously subscribe as i mentioned before um i'm also videos and yeah um hopefully i'll see you again all right cheers <laughs>